CloudDB, shaping your new normal. All right. Welcome, everyone, wherever you are around the world. Uh, welcome to the 2022 APEC APEX Days by Apaco UC. This is our first year having this dedicated APEX event, and it's our honor and privilege also to run this event with the support of the India Oracle APEX user group. Please remember to register to as many sessions as you can. This way, you will be able to have access to our replays until April 20. Our replays of the sessions of the last two days was already uploaded to the system. That means all you need to do is, even if the session already passed, you can register to attend. Go to your attendant tab of the system, and you will see your personal agenda, and you will see the links right there for all the replays. I would like to say thank you to our Oracle user groups in Java user groups that made this event possible and also to our sponsors, the Oracle ACE community, the DevRel team, and your main sponsors, Oracle Corporation and CloudDB. Now for today's session, models and dialogues and drawers. Now what? By a good friend, Karen Cannell. Please feel free to write questions at any time by using the chat window of live webinar that should be in your right lower corner of your screen and Karen will be answering all your questions at the end of the session. And if you have any issues during the presentation, please also let me know by the chat and I will try to help you the best I can. Now, without any further ado, I would like to leave you with this amazing session by Carol, Can <laughs> Carol Kenna. And please, uh, Carol, Karen, sorry, you have no yours. Thank you, Francesco, and thank you for all you do for APEC OEC and um, conferences in general. I love um, love seeing you, and I can't wait to see you again in person. Um, thank you, everyone, for attending. Thank you for supporting your user group. Um, I, I am Karen Cannell, TH Technology, and um, I love doing this stuff. I'm kind of geeky. Um, so this session used to be Apex modals, pop-ups, and dialogues. And then, what the heck, Oracle came out with, with um, just getting my screen to, to come on. Yeah. They, they came out with these drawers as of Apex 21.2. So I don't know what version of Apex you're on. It, you know, so don't go, oh my gosh, Karen was talking about drawers. I don't know what they are. They're in Apex 21.2. And, um, it's confusing enough. When do I use a modal? When do I use a pop-up? When do I use, what's the difference between a pop-up and a dialogue? What, what do you mean? And now you give me these drawer things. Am I supposed to use drawers now instead of modals? Don't worry. Well, we'll talk about all, all of that. Um, support your user groups. Um, you guys got a great community out there. Lots of great communities. Um, dive in, learn things. Um, that's, I find that's the best way for me to meet people and really advance my career. Um, I would not have TH Technology, which is my company, um, without everything I've learned at user groups and through the ACE community. Uh, many thanks to the ACE community, to Oracle DevRel, um, to Oracle, and um, always to CloudDB for supporting events like these, sponsoring events like these. Um, the, the events like these are where I learned um, most of my stuff. Uh, I, I have volunteered. I'm ODTUG vice president. Um, I'm now an ACE director. All that means is I do a lot of this stuff and I have fun. Um, this is, is my happy place. I'll be there in May. Um, I was just skiing. That's another happy place. Find your happy place and stay sane in this crazy world with COVID and uh, the threat of wars. Um, it's real important that outside of work, we do other things to stay sane, stay safe. Um, and uh, for me, that means unplugging from my computer and doing something, you know, totally. And in, in the middle of the ocean, I cannot tweet. I cannot connect. I, I just need to, to zone out and, and get back to what's um, it's balance. It all comes to balance. So, so whatever you need to do, balance. 
um, because I want to see you guys at live events. Um, I am on the Yodi Tech board. I am the Casco conference chair this year. We're in Texas this year. If you can't get there this year, we got one every year. We'd love to see you. Um, go to the APAC events when they are live, um, hopefully in November of this year. So, um, yeah, let's get back into the swing of things. And, and here's where I like to ask um, what you guys are doing, what version you're on, what have you done? Are you JavaScript wizards? And so I'm going to assume this middle of the road. I'm going to assume um, I'm live, guys. See ya. This is my puppy. Uh, Mrs. Tally, good night, doll. Um, so I'm going to assume you guys are middle of the road, and uh, that's um, and so we'll we'll cover the new stuff. And if you're not on that version, then you'll know it's coming. Um, why do we care about new versions? Because the Apex team moves really, really fast, and um, if I know there's this new feature coming in the next version, then maybe I'll wait off implementing that feature because I know it'll be declarative in 21.2. Why would I write it? So like if I have a requirement for a drawer, um, I would recommend don't do this, the custom coding now for that. Wait until you upgrade. Now your, your requirements may say, no, we need it now. Um, but at least you, you'll be informed. You'll be informed. So what? why attend? We're going to learn about dialogues, pop-ups, inline dialogues, drawers, inline drawers, what the distinctions are, when to use one or the other, and the best practices. Um, a reminder that Apex is a low-code development tool. Low-code means we can be more agile. We can do things faster. Essentially, we write less code. Um, so all I mean is do it declaratively first use the new features that are there to make our lives easier. So you leverage that low code thing. Apex gives us lots of tools. Um, they keep giving us more new things. Um, just gave us drawers. Um, we don't have to use them. We can code it all on our own. Um, please don't do that. Um, unless you get paid by lines of code. Um, use the tool as it's laid out, customize the exceptions. Uh, because when you upgrade, then you're supported. Um, from experience, I have had to do a customization. And um, every single upgrade we did, I had to go back and revisit that. And actually, we're going to have to rewrite it because they came out with the Apex Data Parser. I did a data loading upgrade. So stay in the sandbox as much as you can. Um, it'll only help you when you upgrade. Now I'm going to divert a little and talk a little about those 21 two new features because you're going to see them. And if what you see is a little different from your version, I want to make sure you know, um, yes, this is new in 21 two. Um, first thing to point out, because I'm going to be showing you code and I'm going to show you inline regions. They used to call that region in the, um, in the Apex Builder where, you know, we have the body area and we have, you know, footer, you know, places where we put components. It used to be called inline dialogues. Now it's named dialogues, drawers, and pop-ups. Why? Because it holds dialogues, drawers, and inline dialogues, drawers, and pop-ups. And in the template, it'll often show up as region position four for whatever reason. But they've just been nice to us and named it what it is. Um, so you'll see that difference in the builder. Um, they came out with modal dialog drawers um, as pages and as inline dialogs. Um, this one's fun, a new modal dialog event, and we'll be talking about this a lot more. We used to just have dialog closed. Well, dialog closed only fired when I clicked a close button. And we had no way to capture um, or an event to follow that a user clicked on the escape key or the um, window close button. Um, and now we do. And this will, it doesn't make sense to you what I'm saying right now. It will in a few minutes. And then the other thing we have, this is really cool, is updated alert and confirm dialogue. So we can declaratively make them look something like this. Now we could do that before by building what? An inline dialogue or an inline pop up. Well, a lot of the cases where we used to do an inline dialogue or an inline pop up, 
just for a confirm or an alert. We don't have to do that anymore. We can do that declaratively. And I'll show you examples of that. Okay, so that's our preview. Um, a little bit more about these alert and confirm dialogues. These are the settings that are declarative. So you can see um, I can use a warning icon. It's a standard information, um, danger, warning, success um, to give you the, the green for success, the red for danger. Um, I can customize labels. I don't know about you, but that's retiring a lot of JavaScript for me. Actually, it's retiring a couple functions that I use in a lot of places. Um, and it's just making my life easier. Um, you can use template directives in these. Again, um, reuse of code low code, use, your, use those substitutions, make things easier. And um, now if you have a button and uh, we have a little flag that says require confirmation setting, um, if I turn that on, um, then um, th this little requires confirmation, then I can automatically get that confirmation message in the confirm pop-up. So that's a lot of coding that I don't have to do anymore. Okay, so that's really our preview, and I'll show you a little bit more. So let's talk about um, some definitions first. What are they? Well, I'm, I'm just going to show you screenshots, and I'm going to jump into the app, and I, if I ever get back to slides, then um, that'll be okay. So this modal dialog page is a page above the, um, the main page. A region, inline dialog region, looks pretty much the same, Karen. What's the difference? Well, the page is a separate Apex page that's showing above the other. The region, inline dialog region, is a region that was already on the page, not visible, that becomes visible when I say open region. Very similar to an inline pop-up region. It's a region that already existed on the page. It just didn't render. And it only renders when I say open region. Um, as opposed to open page. We'll talk more about that. A modal drawer page is just the same, and I call it just the same as a modal dialog page. It's a drawer that comes out over my um, my main page. Really, it's just the same as a, as a dialog page. It's just how the animations and how it displays and doesn't display. Um, in Apex, our drawers are anchored left or right outside of apex they do north and south um, it's just not declaratively implemented in apex right now um, and an inline drawer region this is it's a region on the page that just displayed when um, i called open region and i'll show you all of this so a few definitions modal means it's holding the user fake it, focus until I close that that window or drawer. Um, for example, the edit details page of a master detail form. We're all familiar with that. No, Non-modal means a user can interact with both pages, i.e. help text or an Apex debug window or the session window. Those, those go off and they can stay there forever. Um, Dialog is a window above the parent page, so it's either a dialog page or a, um, a dialog can be modal or non-modal. Um, the dialog has the title bar content and the close icon. Resizable, draggable, stackable, those are all configurator, configurable by you, the developer. Most often we're talking about a modal dialog page or an inline dialog region or drawer. So modal dialog drawer or inline dialog drawer, same thing concept. So page versus dialog page is a separate Apex page with the full URL, whether you see it or not. And so that modal dialog page is a page above. And that inline dialog region, as I mentioned before, is a part of the page. So we should be getting it now. Page is separate, full Apex page, the full context, um, the full transaction scope. That inline dialog region being a, a region that's part of the page. Now think about a transaction, a, a submit button on that inline dialog region is going to submit the page. So you got to think about that. Is that what I really want? So mostly we're talking about that modal dialog page versus the inline dialog region. Pop-ups. Well, isn't that the same thing as a dialog? Isn't Not in Apex speak. 
because we use a different template and the different use and that it's lighter weight, it's faster and simpler. Um, how so? Well, there's no title bar. The pop-up is always modal. There is no option to resize it or drag it around. It's just there. And if I want to get out of a pop-up, I can just click somewhere else on the page. Okay, drawers. Um, page or dialogue. Um, page being the whole separate scope of a page. Inline dialogue drawer is a region on the page that doesn't display until I tell it to. And um, so essentially, it, the drawer versus the dialogue is a different template. Um, templates are really, really important in, in um, Apex as they are in, in all of web development now. And our drawers are modal as they're implemented in Apex. So we're going to talk about dialogue pages, dialogue regions, and pop-up regions. And let's just jump in here. And like I said, I may not come back. Um, two slides here for, for a bit. Um, just running through. This is a demo app if anyone wants this demo app. I don't even think I have any any commit anywhere in here. Um, if anyone wants it, just for the reference, um, just email me or DM me on Twitter. Um, modal dialogue page. Um, what I care about. Now, this page, um, and a modal dialogue page can do a lot, a lot of work. Um, I can move it around wherever I want, but not outside the parent window. Um, I don't know if I, I don't think I allow, I have, I don't have resizable on, but it could be. Um, I'm, I'm in this page until, as a matter of fact, I can't, I can't get back. I'm trying to click. I can't get back to the home page. I can simply type escape to get out of here. I can. Click on this X to get out of here. That may or may not be what you want. Um, so you may want to close off those options. Um, it has its own URL. So it's something I want to show if you can see my URL at the top here. I'm on page eight. I'm on page eight, as you can see. I, I have my, but as soon as I open this dialog page, um, it still says eight up here because this is the parent page. But look, Apex knows I'm on page six. Very interesting. And if I look at page six, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I might have changed something here a while ago, and that's why it didn't bring over. Well, let's just, this is what happens when you um, demo your, you play with your demos and practice things and tweak wording. Um, so page six, um, simple modal dialogue page. Yours would be named whatever you want. Um, the way I make it a modal dialogue page is simply selecting the mode page, page mode, and then the dialogue template. Now, I could use theme default, but I, I because I only have one modal dialogue template, but um, to, to be clear for this. And then there's template options in here. Always look at the template options and see what's there. Um, and then you can see this is, um, you know, just the stuff on my modal dialogue page. I can put as much as I want on this page. Well, what's, what's useful on a modal dialogue page? Well, something like, uh, maybe I just need to edit the employees in a particular department or, um, you know, edit the details of a master detail um, region or all kinds of things. Um, because it's its own page, it has its own transaction space. So I can um, give this analyst a, a big raise and, um, and, and that's, that's done. It hasn't affected the parent window. Nothing affects the parent window until I close here. Now, um, opening this page, um, let's talk about opening these guys. Um, and, and you'll see I have the little, you know, how to do things. Um, well, the easiest way is redirect a page in this application, which is exactly what I've done on the, um, the button in the parent page. Um, however, if, uh, because when I use that redirect a page in application, um, that 
gives me, and I, I do want to show you that. It, the the bit I'm gonna show it to you once because you guys know how to do this. Um, redirect a page in this application. When we use this, Apex takes care of the checksums. Whenever we go from page to page, we navigate to page page to page. We need to add the checksum. So whenever we do it this way, no matter how how many items we set and whatever we do with the advanced stuff and the request here, Apex handles the um handles that checksum when we um don't do things declaratively then we have to use either apex page get url or apex util prepare url to build the apex url to ensure that checksum is included so if i mean there's tons of use cases where you have to do that and um, so get very familiar with get url and prepare url if you're using modal pages or modal drawer pages, because you'll have to, whenever you go to a page, no matter how, whether it's a, a dialogue, a drawer, if it's modal um, or not, you need to make sure that checksum is there. So um, those are two ways for opening. And actually one is the declarative, the other is the get URL, prepare URL, and there's infinite options within that. Now, closing these, um, I can simply escape. I showed you that. I can click on the X button, um, or I can use a close or a cancel button. And let's talk a little bit about these because I'll be re repeating this a lot here. Um, the escape is essentially a cancel. Um, the X is essentially a, you know, a cancel. Um, when I say, specifically say close, I trigger an Apex dialog close event. Cancel does not. And um, it does not trigger that dialog close event. So I can use close and have, um, you know, after submit things, I can, I can build a bunch of things around that. Um, I can branch, um, so I can simply branch to a page. So looking at my close options here, and then as I, I'll cancel before I get into the builder. Escape is your get out quick. The X button is a get out quick. Cancel um, is just a dynamic action with a cancel dialog. Um, and again, that doesn't fire. So my close is a simple close dialog. So click, click on the button. And you guys are going to just freak when you see how easy this is. Um, close dialog. Because it's it's a it's an action. It's actually a dyna dynamic action. You know, cancel dialog or close dialog. The difference here is this fires that um, close dialog event, and this this doesn't. So, but now, as of twenty one one. Um, where's that other one? I'll, I'll show you in another, um, the, it's, it's, it's a trigger, not the, not the dynamic action action. So we'll show you, I'll show you that when you get there. So closed, simple closed dialogue. And in this one, I use the sample, the, the cancel dialogue. Um, if I use closed dialogue, then I can actually catch that on my parent page and capture items that I may have passed back. So very easy declarative to do these close things. Um, I spent a lot of time on this one, but I, I wanted to kind of just go over the basics there. A lot of that will be the same for our next things. Why? It's when I have a discrete piece of work, um, a form or an editable grid, or I, I, when I need to do a submit in a discrete transaction that's separate from the flow of the main page. It can be chained or not when you want to focus attention through all um, through all steps. And the convenience is I have that full URL um, very handy for passing items. So I'm going to um, just close this one down. Uh, Non-modal page. This guy can live here forever. I big difference here is I'm out of the main transaction flow. Um, do not use use submit process, processing in your non-modal page because you're going to confuse 
the flow of the application and you're going to confuse potentially really confuse session state um draggable resizable help text um our best example of non-modal page is is this guy i can do a lot of stuff here i'm searching i'm doing but i'm not submitting things on the apex builder i'm not doing any builder changes here i'm just looking at a lot of things that are related to it and i can actually have stuff on top of that you know you get the idea non-modal page best example we have um inline dialogue region now this is interesting notice that i'm still on page eight down here um and so where is this guy on page eight this is where we have um this dialogue drawers and pop-ups area and i can put as much in here as i want none of these things uh, showed up and um regions regions positions oh those are, that's button stuff sorry i wanted the region position so region and um the positions so you see in 21.2, um, some of these things are now legacy. Um, but what the Apex team has done is made our templates, uh, our page templates, a lot more flexible declaratively. <laughs> so banner, after logo, before nav bar, after bar. We can put items and regions in the toolbar now, in the, the header bar. Um, so this dialogues, drawers, and pop-ups is just the new name for what they used to call inline dialogues or region position four behind the scenes. So when I put something here, and let's make sure it stays there, um, it's, you know, it's whatever I wanna put, I, I have sub regions here and I have buttons here. Um, obviously this didn't, and, and the same with this drawer region, these guys did not render until I clicked on this button and did um so this is on click button a simple open region you cannot make it any easier to this and the equivalent of open region is um apex theme apex dot theme dot open region it's very very simple and i'll show you that later uh, my inline pop-up is um, same thing. It's just a region that's in that um, position, that same position. That's my button. I'm sorry. I, I open it. I open that region, open region, and I give it the region name. Um, I could, um, I could have done um, by a JavaScript and open things with jquery selector and things like that but this open region selecting region is your easiest way to go so um back to here um so inline dialog region i've still got the toolbar at top um but it, I, I don't have the overhead and the transaction space of the full page um so obviously I'm not going to do the same amount of stuff. This is for smaller things, for reference things, for, um, oh yeah, and I can move this thing around. Um, I can resize it if as a developer I've allowed that. Um, I showed you the opening with just the open region and here's, here's that call, apex theme dot open region and give it the region static ID. Um, if you're not in the habit of using setting that static ID for your regions and your items, um, just practice doing it because we're going to need it more as we go forward. Um, now, something that's interesting about um, uh, opening real easy, open region or Apex theme dot open region. Closing, I, I can escape. We like escape. I can use the X because I have the X. I can. Um, you would think someone's out there saying, well, can't I use this closed dialogue, right? Because we had closed dialogue. Well, don't get, don't get into that because closed dialogue, and I'll show you these 
in here. These don't work on an inline pop-up region. Um, so there's my, where am I going here? Page, 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 page. I gotta go down to my region. I get confused by the names and I named them. Inline dialog region. So here's, those are just descriptive things. Now I've got, this is the closed dialog. I'm, this is just click on that button. So this is the name of my button. This closed dialog doesn't work. Now this is where I wish I could see your faces. Why doesn't it work? Because closed dialog is to close dialog pages. Um, same thing with cancel line, cancel dialog. Not going to work. Does absolutely nothing because it's not a dialog page. So don't get don't get confused by that. I put it there on purpose. Hopefully it doesn't confuse you. Um, if you're like me, you're going to do it and go what? And the reason is um, you need to close region. Think about it. You're closing a region. You're not closing a dialogue page. You're closing a region. So. Even if this said closed dialog page, it would make it easier for our brains that are doing 5,000 5, other things at once to understand. So closed dialog, cancel dialog for pages. Um, close region for regions. Okay. And that applies for pop-ups as well. Um, and that's going to close it. Um, inline pop-up. Now here's where you're really going to see there is no header. There is no X. All I have to do is click outside it. Open dialogue. I can click outside to the cows go home. Um, it's not going anywhere until I actually escape or X. I have to, as a user, take an action. Um, inline pop-up. It's just there until I start to do something else. Um, really lightweight informational messages. I can't drag it. This is actually large for a pop-up. Um, opening it. Um, and you notice it, it opens faster as well. Um, opening it is a simple open region or that same apex.theme open region with the region static ID. And to close, I just showed you light, lightweight stuff. Um, now notice the page. We watch that page open. The pop-up, it's there. Why is it there? Well, because there's not much to do in displaying it and it's already, the stuff is already on the page. Okay, cool, fun stuff. Drawers, um, dialogue page drawer. Take some time to pull up the page. Difference between using a drawer and a dialogue page. Same concept, different look, and in general, um, people, will say use a drawer for more stuff um, you can do more on a drawer there's more real estate it's the full height of the page um, use your discretion um, and and be consistent um, if you on one flow of your application you use pop-ups and then on another one you're using drawers well is that confusing to the users or maybe you have one certain type of transactions that are always drawers and you use inline pop-ups for certain things. So you, you have to do some design. Um, in general, um, you know, the drawer is always going to be fixed to the parent window. Um, you can't move it or resize it. So as a developer, I need to size it properly. Um, and it, it's, you know, I'm modal, I'm captive. Um, I can't move it to see things behind it. So I have to make sure everything I need is in the drawer. Okay, and um, opening, it's a page, right? So you should be able to tell me by now, I open it declaratively by a redirect to page setup, or I use a get URL or prepare URL. Um, we can't get around that when we're opening a page. Closing, yes. Um, I Well, same thing, I can escape, I can cancel, I can use the, the dialog up here, um, or I can use the dynamic actions on the bottom here, and they're the same closed dialog page, canceled dialog page. Um, cool. And then, so let's escape out of this one. 
inline drawer region. Again, that renders faster, just like the inline dialog region. I've got the um, bar header at the top. Um, I can't, it, just like a drawer, I can't resize it. I can't access the stuff behind it. Um, so again, it's, it's for displaying or showing or information. Um, not really a full transaction stuff. I can set values here, but I don't want to submit the page until I'm ready to submit the whole page. Um, opening and closing is um, open is open region. Closing is closed region. And again, those, those close and cancel dialogues don't work here. Okay, so let's talk about um, what happens if I really, really want someone to, um, to not escape, um, notice here, there's, there's no X and there's no, um, I'm, I'm, I'm clicking on escape, trust me. So I have to use this. Well, how did I do this? Um, it's got, uh, let's open this page and I didn't go to this page. Edit. Come on, I need to go to this page. Um, well, one thing I can show you while we're here. Part of the no close is in the CSS of the parent page. Come on. Um, I add this no close. Um, and let's zoom in so you can see that. So it's it's some CSS that says display none on that UI dialog title bar close. Then on the page itself, I don't think I saved anything there, but I just want to get to this page. On the page itself, modal dialog page, the no close. In my attributes, I have this, and I want to show the help over here. Because when I go, I like keeping that help on. And let's click on attributes, because look, it just told me a whole bunch of stuff here. but. Um, this close on escape false means just what it says. When I escape, it's not going to close. And so if I read the help, then it says refer to the jQuery UI and, and, and this stuff, right? And if I open that, that tells me a bunch of directives I can put in here, like no close. Now, some are more useful than others, and that is in the slides. This CSS class no close is on the dialogue page it was described on the parent page so it's it's you think the css would go here but the definition of that class is on the parent page and that gets rid of this x and disabled the close so just so now i have to capture my users um, with a button now what i did on here is am i sure i want to cancel well, wait a minute that's one of those new directives on my button, that's my cancel button on my dialogue page. And I said, requires confirmation. I said, are you sure you want to cancel? And then I gave it a style. So this is that new easy way to not build an inline dialogue. It's, I can do it declaratively now. Pretty cool. Um, so obviously I'm canceling. And then on the close, um, I think, Okay, so this one, I'm going to capture that escape or close. So I'm going to click here, um, and I'm using that, that new event. And it says, hey, that dialog closed or canceled event fired. That's pretty cool. So maybe I can capture when someone clicks on that. Well, I did this on purpose. You know, this, hey, don't leave yet. Um, it's already closed. It's gone. So this is too late to prevent the close or escape. Um, it just lets you know that it happened. And if you have some cleanup to do, then um, then you can do it. What I click here is irrelevant because the dialog is already closed. And um, just to show you on that. So open here. And then we have to go back to this guy. And all it's doing is capturing 
a different event. Um, where's my dynamic action? Uh, no, not on the right page. It's page. Ah, I don't want to uh, just, I'll, I'll come back to that when I see it. I don't want to take up the, too much time on that because um, it's that I have a dynamic action that says on dialogue closed or canceled. And that is actually on this page. And I just want to show you this dialogue closed or canceled. And um, it works the same whether it's on the inline dialogue um, or on the, um, and so this is that alert and confirmation that I just added. The one I just showed you is the one on the modal page. So this is the first alert that says, hey, it just fired. And then this is that full um, confirm action that has this full set of settings where I can really do a lot here with the styles and the icons declaratively. So they just saved us from making a lot of dialogues. Okay, very quickly. Um, and then the drawer is the same, works the same. So there's all your basics right there. And so the, again, your drawer is closed, so I, I can do some cleanup. Some quick things um, from a report, you know, declarative link, declarative links. These are all easy. This modal page by a JavaScript, and there are some times we need to do this. Well, how do I do that? Because I have to do the check something. And, um, and then I'll show you one more thing with a modal. Um, what I did in my classic report, and I'm just going to do the classic report because that's the hard one, is in this HTML expression here, I've built a link. And I gave it a class and I just said, you know, modal dialog page, depth no column. And then I gave it that data depth no equals the depth no value of this column. So that expression means for that I've got a link for every column. And from that, that means I can create on click of this jQuery selector is you know, exactly what I built in the HTML expression, the link with the class of MVP depth no column. And because I did that, now I can do the action to set the depth no value based on the data depth no. Right? So I set an item and then I execute some server side code, which is, hey, that get URL or prepare URL because I need the checksum. And then I execute the JavaScript to navigate to that URL that I just built, doing a little bit of escaping so that all that, and this, this code is all in the app, all that make dialog URL does is escape um, special characters. So I, I had to do a little bit of trickiness to build the URL and, um, to actually fire the link to build the URL. Um, inline, these are easy because they're just AVEX theme open regions and same for the drawer. Um, so nothing new there. Now one less, and from grids, um, I'm not gonna take the time right now to show those because it's mostly declarative. And then because every column of a grid is an item, it's much, much easier to, to do those dynamic actions, open region, declarative links for the pages. When you do things from a wizard, um, by default, there isn't a wizard modal page that has the inline dialog regions. I had to make one and um, I'll show you. It, it's as simple as copying the page region uh, the page template, creating my own. And what that looks like is the same as the regular modal region with the addition of this inline dialogue part down here. That's what gives me the space to put my inline dialogues. And by default, the wizard 
modal template does not have that. So I had to build my own. And we can do that in Apex almost declaratively. Now, there's one more piece down here that you have to scroll way down here is you have to make sure that this region is selected. If you don't have this selected, then Apex is just going to ignore that dialog and pop up region on the area on your page. And so what happens is now I can, in my wizards, do a modal dialog page. Now, wait, what? You as a developer need to make sure that sizing is correct. So if I don't set something in here for height and width, then it's going to give me something I may not want. So um, just be aware of that. So those are, um, and, and why would you do, before you do modals and inline dialogues on a, on a wizard, really think about what you're doing. Is that a standard you want to do? Why are you doing, we can build pop up, pop up, pop up, pop up, but why? So be, be smart about that. And is that what, what you want to do? Um, be consistent with how you do things, size things appropriately. If you do have to have pop-ups. Okay. So I'm over a little bit. Um, I'm going to just jump back to the slides for a sec. Um, and um, I showed you a bunch of stuff and the slides are available and you can do a whole bunch of things. Um, uh, let's go down here. Um, use the template options. I told, I show you how to um, open them. I, I show you the code for this stuff. Um, I show you um, just what I showed you with the escape. Uh, what I want to get to. Oh, these, these, a few. Um, another way to open a modal, and this is an example of a, a working. This is a survey where the survey is in a wizard. So we're doing pop ups on pop ups. This was a use case of that. What we did was um, some JavaScript here to do Apex Navigation Redirect to this item, which all this item does is the prepare URL because it's a page. So just another option um, went through all this stuff. This is another modal from a modal. This is a custom plugin right now. And if they pick other, we need to open a dialog to capture the other. And that was done with more JavaScript to pass the appropriate items for the appropriate row in and then open my inline dialog. So it's that same basics to open anything inline. It's Apex theme region, open region. Um, to open a page, you either do the declarative go to page or you do the um, get URL or prepare URL. So, um, Everything should be its own. I've talked about all of this. Um, everything should be its own function when you do a dialogue or a, a modal page. Um, you're doing a little bit of flow outside of the main flow. So it's just a discrete bit, a discrete bit. So a, a page is a discrete bit with a transaction. A dialogue is a discrete bit not a full transaction. Just add some stuff that's going to enhance the rest of the page. Um, do it declaratively first. Um, just be aware of maintenance and upgrades. Keep your life easier. Have standards and use them. And, um, and have fun. And let me go back and see if we have questions. And sorry for going over. I know you guys' time is, is um, valuable. And, uh, Hi, Karen. And sure. we have a question for Faiz. Can, oh, Oracle, can Oracle Forms directly yeah. be converted <laughs> to an Oracle Apex application? Is there any wizard or tool to do this? We can. We have huge legacy applications in Oracle Forms, latest version, and we do not want or can afford to do complete new development. So what is the way out? Great. Um, 
Faiz, I wish I could tell you that there was a wizard to do this transformation. Um, there, there is not a wizard, there is not a hard and fast tool. And the reason is Oracle Forms is, um, Oracle Forms is, is different in how it handles session state in what's on a, on a page, how much you can put on a page. Apex is actually stateless and every page should be a transaction. Usually in a conversion from Oracle Forms to Oracle Apex, there is a bit of re-engineering of evaluating what are your transactions and does everything fit one-to-one. -one. Um, so there is no set wizard, there is no set tool. However, there are frameworks there are processes and Oracle Apex, in fact, used to have a migration that would help you migrate from Forms to Apex. There are companies out there like Insum and Viscosity, and I know there are others. Um, I think Foex, um, I think Foex has one um, that have built um, practices around the process of migrating forms to Apex. There are a lot of questions. Are these simple declarative forms? Do you have a lot of custom code? Is that code in the form or is that code in your database? So as you can see, um, there's a lot, a lot that goes into that. So there's an evaluation page. I know in some framework has, um, oh, what's the name of that other company? There's another company that does it well and email me and I'll get you their name. Um, they're based in Germany and they do a fabulous job of it. So um, I wish I could give you better news. It is a re-engineering and um, do put thought into it because your pages will change because your transactions change. Um, I have another question. Can an application which uses models, dialogues, and drawers be converted to a mobile application? Or is there a lot of work to do replace it with more mobile friendly features? Um, yes and no. It depends on what you're doing on those dialogues. Um, all of the stuff, if you use a universal theme, everything in Apex is responsive right now. Um, so you can do these, these dialogue kind of things if you want to, but this is where you have to be smart about how you design your page. Why would I do a modal in a mobile page? I've seen it done. I've done that. Um, I mean, I've, I've, I've used pages like that. I haven't built that. Um, is it a lot of work? It depends on how much you have there. My recommendation is... Um, and, and, and especially if you're coming from an Oracle Forms going to um, Apex or even taking an Apex application that's out there, maybe it's a legacy app and saying, this needs to be mobile friendly. Build it with the universal theme, build it with responsive stuff in, in mind, um, use the components like the reflow report and um, shrink your transactions down to one thing um, and, um, so yeah, it, it is a lot of work. It is a transition, um, but it, it is, I have to say it is much easier in later versions than in say Apex 4.1, 4.2, or even Apex 5.1. The latest versions have made that much easier for us. Again, not the answer you wanna hear, but that's, that's what it is. Uh, no problem. And Karen, we have a couple more questions. The next sure. one is, can we have the URL for the demo page with user credentials? Um, better than that, I will give you the whole application. And so just email me and I'll put my email in here um, and I'll just send you the whole shebang. And then you've got access to the whole thing. And it, you can always, um, you can always, you know, if you have specific questions in it, email me and I'll, I'll walk you through why that was done that way and, and what the options are. Um, Fantastic. Oh, cool. 
And we have one more question. Um, uh, how about Oracle ADF, Application Development Framework, to Oracle Apex? Because the code is mostly in database. How yeah. hard is it to migrate? It's again, it, you're, you're um, again, th there is no wizard, there is no tool. Um, with your code mostly in the database, that tells me you have your business processes identified, your, your business logic. That means you've separated your presentation from the business logic. So that transition is going to be, um, be not so bad, but there is no tool for it. So in that case, you are recreating. And, um, you know, and there is no migration tool. Um, and, I, and I have to be honest with you, the migration tool that was in Apex, I keep an old version of SQL Developer around and I keep an old version of the Apex around because that migration tool was in there. In the recent <laughs> versions, I'm not even sure if it's still there. Um, but what that let you do is look at, and, and, you, and the same process for ADF, look at this page. What's, what's, the, what's the business transaction? What's the business logic? And if those are separated, then in Apex, I'm like, if it's a form, I'm building a form on a view or a table. Um, and done. Um, if it's a report, maybe I'm building a form and a report on a view or a table. But And, and then I have business transactions, but now it's simple calls behind the buttons. So while ADF to Apex is going to be more one-to-one -one what you see on the page, there is no tool to automatically convert it for you. Sorry. <laughs> but so I hope that helps. Great questions. And thank you very much for your attention. I can tell you're picking up a lot and learning a lot. And that's good. That's really good to know. Thank you so much, Karen. Excellent presentation as always. I would like to remind everyone also after we get disconnected from the session, you're going to have a very uh, small survey in case you want to give any feedback for the speaker. And saying that, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much, Karen, uh, for giving your time to the community, as always. And please be safe, everyone. Yes, everyone, stay safe. We want to see you in person. Take care. <laughs> Take care. Thank you, Francisco. Thanks, Karen. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.